Hello. So right now we're going to calculate the factor tree of the number 48. Now this is something we've never done before. Um, so I want you to bear with me, okay? Okay. So let me begin with an example that will be very easy for us to understand. Okay. I know that if I were to ask any of you, um, what two numbers multiply to give me 10? I know that all of you um, will, will have probably already said, David, 5 times 2, right? And so in this case, um, how do you call it? This would be my factory for 10. It would be 5 times 2. Why is it 5 times 2? Be I mean, why does this complete the factor tree? Because these two numbers at the bottom are uh, prime. That is, they cannot be broken up further. Okay? The only two numbers that I'll multiply to give me 5 are 1 times 5. Or 1 and 5. Same thing with 2. 1 and 2. Okay? Um, and so this will be our factor tree. And the reason that we're coming up with this factor tree is that it allows us to write 10 as a product of these prime factors. So 10 equals to 2 times 5. Okay, notice how I wrote the, the uh, uh, a big fat dot in the middle to indicate multiplication to say that 10 equals 2 times 5. Um, now the reason behind why this is, uh, why, why finding factor trees is useful um, is because it'll allow us, um, number one, when we want to uh, simplify fractions in a more systematic uh, way, which we're going to learn how to do later, um, finding a factor tree will help us do that effectively. Also, Finding a factor tree will help us when we're trying to find um, this special number called a least common multiple. We'll talk about that later. And the purpose of the least common multiple, or one purpose of the least common multiple, is to find the most uh, effective choice for uh, a common denominator when we want to add or subtract uh, two fractions with different denominators. The least common multiple will be the best choice for such a denominator. Uh, and um, and also later on, um, when we want to take square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares, finding a factor tree will help us do it, uh, will help us perform the simplification of the square roots uh, as far as that can be done, okay, without approximations, okay? And we'll see that much, much later, okay? And now with that, and now with this basic example so that you can see what a factor tree is, okay? Here we found the factor tree for 10. These numbers, the 2 and the 5, they're known as the factors or prime factors. And the factor tree allows us to find this breakdown of 10. And so now we're going to do that for 48, okay? Okay. So basically the way that we're going to go about this is we're going to look at 48, okay? I'm going to put my 48 at the top, at the top okay? And I'm going to ask myself, okay... What numbers? Um, what number can div? What number can I use to break forty-eight up? What number can divide forty-eight? Okay. Now I can see from the end of this forty-eight that the uh, that the last digit is a even number. So that means that I can divide forty-eight by two. Okay. So I'm about to do that uh, with long division and here on the side okay and that's why we had to start this whole procedure with long division because i needed you to have practice doing that okay so now i ask myself how many times does two go into four i know that uh two times two is four so i know that it goes in twice okay so now this two times this two gives me four so i place that four here underneath this four i ask myself what is four minus four that gives me zero and I bring down my 8, okay? And then I ask the next question. How many times does 2 go into 8? Uh-huh. 4 times. Why? Because 4 times 2 is 8, okay? 8 minus 8, 0. There's no digit to bring down further, so it stops there. Okay? So I, what I have just done is I've realized that I can break up 48 into 2 times 24. Okay? Okay. Now... I then ask, I know 2 is a prime number. What do I mean by prime number? I mean one of those numbers whose only factors are 1 in itself, okay? So, for example, 2 is the smallest prime number, okay? 
because one is not considered prime, okay? So two is the smallest prime number, then you have three. Four is not prime, why? Because four is equal to two times two. So it has factors that are different from one in itself. Five is a prime number, six is not. Um, seven is, eight is not, nine is not, 10 is not, 11 is, and so on and so forth, okay? So I know two is a prime number, so that's the end of that uh, tree. But then I ask myself, what is the, what can I multiply to give me 24? Now, some of you might have mentioned, oh, it could be two times 12, it could be three times eight, it could be uh, four times six, uh, and so on. And so um, let's, let's assume you don't know that. Let's assume that we say, okay, aha, David, the last digit of 24 is four. Four is an even number. Therefore, this must be divisible by two also. So we're gonna do that here. We're gonna ask ourselves, okay, how many times does two go into 24? Let's do that here in full explicit detail. Okay. How many times does two go into two? One. One times two is two. Two minus two, zero. Okay. Then I bring down my next digit. And remember, I only bring one digit at a time. In this case, there's only one digit to bring down, so we can't bring down more digits. But I want you guys to notice, I always, I always just bring down one digit, and that's important. Now I ask myself, how many times does two go into four? I know that two times two is four, so therefore I put my two here, and I ask myself, what is two times two? It's four. What is four minus four? Zero. I can see there's no digit for me to bring down, and so that's the end of this division, pro of this division process. And so I can see here that I can break up 24 into 2 times 12. What I want you guys to observe here is that what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to find, I'm trying to go, I'm trying, I'm, I'm answering the question, what two numbers multiply to give me this number? And they become the two leaves of my tree here, or the two branches. Um, if they stop, that's a leaf. So this would be a leaf. If they don't stop like this one, then it, then it can be broken up further here. I've broken it. I know that two times 12 is 24, okay? And two is again a leaf because it's prime. It cannot break further. But the 12, the 12 can probably be broken down. Of course, I know that you guys probably know it can be broken down. And, um, and uh, so we could put, uh, for example, I know that you guys probably already know that 12 can be written as two times six, three times four, um, right? And I could do either one of those and it'll work. And so let's do that here. I know that it's two times six, and I know that six is two times three, okay? And so then what I do is I realize that, aha, I now have the factor tree of 48, okay? And so that permits me to write 48 as follows. So this is my factor tree of 48. You can see that each of the numbers on the bottom is a prime number. Okay, and what this permits us to do is it permits us to write it as 48 equals, okay, let me see, one, two, three, four twos, so I can write it as two times two times two times two times, and then there's one three times three, okay? I hate how close that got to our factor tree, so I hope you guys don't put it that close in your notes so you can see the clear difference. Now, Later on, you might also see the exponential notation. Okay, let me write that down for you here. We might have use of it, but it's not too important for you guys to see this yet, but it, but I don't wanna avoid this opportunity to show it to you. If I have a number that we're gonna label as x, okay, and I raise it to some power like n, this will be a stand-in for, or a, or a shorthand, if you will, for writing the number x times itself, like times x, times dot, 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 times itself, n times, okay? So for example, if I had two to the third power, this would be, the two would stand in the place of the x, and the top number is three, so I would have three copies of the x being multiplied. In this case, two times two times two, okay? Or if I had three squared, that would be the same thing as 
3 is my x and my 2 is my n. So I would have uh, 3 times 3, 2 times. So it would just be 3 times 3, okay? And if you, if you want to use that notation here, I could have also written this conclusion that we draw as 1, 2, 3, 4 as 2 to the 4th power times 3, okay? But this notation is not necessarily that important for now, but it is good to know it, okay? But it's not essential, okay? And we're going to see how to use this, uh, this fact later, okay? For the reasons that I brought up earlier. I hope you've enjoyed this example, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.